the Unriveted Podcast, where we dial in on technology, the intersections of digital transformation, artificial intelligence, and people. In this podcast, we're going to talk about topics from the past, the present, and the future as they apply to AI, machine learning, and the modernization of process automation. In this, this episode is sponsored by and brought to you by the Verb Corporation, where words have action. Hey, John, what are we going to talk about today? Hey, Martin, today we are going to talk about one of the biggest trends in business. Uh, and you probably heard this phrase before, digital transformation. What do you think? John, are we talking like <laughs> TQM, total quality management, Six Sigma, <laughs> net promoter score? Help me out. I mean, I'm a little confused. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, it's funny that you mentioned those three topics, Martin, because, you know, we've kind of heard those, we've seen those come, they've, they've been uh, in vogue for a while, and then they kind of went out of fashion, uh, at least for the most part. But uh, uh, hopefully digital transformation doesn't get included in that, uh, you know, that categorization too. So I'll give you my, you know, my opinion of digital transformation is, Let's see, you know, a corporation wants to migrate their local, you know, on-prem compute resources to cloud infrastructure because they're trying to save costs. You know, they're trying to be able to have uh, the ability to scale up fast, you know, el elasticity, uh, how those resources can expand or contract, you know, basically optimizing, you know, how they uh, utilize their IT resources. Um, but you can also think about it for developing, you know, data analytics skills within the business side employees and promoting uh, data-driven, you know, decision-making rather than using gut instincts um, or even achieving. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> gut instincts will always have their, their position somewhere, you know, I suppose, but uh, this is, this is just my opinion, you know, so you, we're, we'll, we'll get to your opinion in a little bit here. That's the whole point of the show, right? Um, but you also, you know, achieving, uh, you know, savings in their, um, you know, using uh, machine learning. Machine learning is kind of, you know, my topic of interest. Um, but how are they using digital transformation to automate processes and, uh, again, you know, automate decision making? Uh, but there's the one thing is, I, I, you know, you hear a lot of companies doing this. And, you know, you mentioned TQM and Six Sigma and Net Promoter Score. And, you know, the last thing that I want from my perspective uh, is to hear companies endlessly toss around the term digital transformation like it's a foregone conclusion for what is needed, you know, to drive real shareholder value in the 21st century. John, there's a lot to unpack there. And I know firsthand uh, we both have seen a lot through our careers. Um, we have. It, I, it's difficult to think of this as the next Y2K happening because, as we know, <laughs> Y2K had meaning. Uh, it was very short term, but very short term meaning. Digital transformation is not bounded. And there's no bounds to it. There's True. a lot going on. Way too much to connect in one episode. John, what do you think? I, I, you're, you're, you are spot on. I agree with you on that. Uh, there's definitely a lot to unpack, and uh, I'm sure we'll have many more episodes to come to dive into digital transformation. But I figured for this first episode, uh, we might as well talk at the most granular level, the lifeblood, if you will, Martin, of the digital transformation, and that is data. Go figure. Data. <laughs> yeah, well, some people, you know, maybe uh, not us included, might find the topic of data to be uh, less than interesting, but, uh, you know, I think about it all the time, and, uh, you know, we've been working in that area for a long time, so... I think at least to us and our audience, you know, um, those folks are probably well tuned in on how important understanding your data is. And you probably heard this phrase before called uh, data is the new oil. Whoa, so wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I am not sliding out on that road, John. <laughs> how does that, how, how does that get to defining what digital transformation means to you? Help me out. Oh yeah, some people hate they hate this phrase. The data is the new oil, and I I've had people talk to me too, or uh, not 
or tell me like, yeah, you shouldn't say that. That's, that's cliche or that's dumb, but I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, you know, uh, oil is obviously, um, at least still nowadays, the fuel that drives our, you know, our cars, our machinery, our airplanes, our boats, what have you. Um, but you know, you can think of data as the same way, but I also try to extend that, um, metaphor, you know, to thinking like, well, you know, when you pull raw crude out of the ground, you have to refine it and process it in order to uh, use it for different applications um, that we use oil for. And, and data is kind of the same way, right? Data is always really dirty. It's never in a clean state. You know, you always have to like do something to it uh, before it gets to uh, an acceptable level. And I think, you know, for this topic of conversation today, talking about data uh, in digital transformations, you know, from my experience, a lot of companies don't spend as much time as they should on managing their data. So that being said, you know, thinking about it in the context of a digital transformation, Martin, you know, what does, you know, what, what what's your experience tell you that a digital transformation actually means? I've kind of given you my idea, but, you know, this wow. is a two-person um, show, right? Yeah, I thought it was just the John monologue for a moment, but that's that's okay, John. <laughs> that's why we're both here. We're we're here to support each other. When I hear digital transformation, I I'm sorry, I, I, I could go a little cynical, but I think of people in lab coats, white lab coats, walking down a hallway carrying clipboards and notebooks, and uh, trying to describe how they're solving problems differently with a different notebook different clipboard and doing it, you know, a new way. And the challenge is, what is digital transformation for, for what initiative? Is it pulling humans out of the middle for decision making? Is it humans are the problem for the decision making? Or can we automate more? Is this the next generation of industrial evolution, you know, version seven, you know, that just the, the notion of AI scares people and, and machine learning, which, which predicates the implementation, it's where the rubber meets the road and you can actually do something with a, what we call AI. And so in that world of digital transformation, I, you know, there's very, cl very clear and precise things you have to do. John, rule one, you have to start with the data. Yes. Yes, yes, that's that's very true. I think he touched on a couple of, you know, good points there is, um, you know, it's not just about automating processes. And I think you might have said, too, well, you know, do we just not need, you know, people to make decisions anymore? Uh, you know, I still think people are going to be, you know, key elements in making decisions for business solutions, although, you know, <laughs> talk to someone who made chat GPT and they might tell you, well, we don't need people at all anymore. But, uh, you know, I think you, you got to think about it holistically, right? Like it's, you know, it's automating processes through data. It's automating decisions through data. Um, but I think, you know, the key word that I, you know, spoke there is, is holistic, right? It's not just an IT kind of initiative. And I don't want to get ahead of myself and, and go down too many avenues that we'll discuss it at a later date. But um, there's a lot more to it, I think, than just thinking, well, how do we take all of our processes and throw them on a computer and, uh, you know, flip the switch and then all of a sudden we're digitally transformed. Um, you hit a good point too, is like, well, how do we define that? Is there a, what do you think? Is there a is there a, a one definition for digital transformation that you could apply to any business um, or any uh, industry? Um, again, you know, thinking about it from the data perspective, what do you think? Yeah, great question, John. The transformation in context of data and scale of data and scope and intent, it varies, segment, market, focus. Um, you know, the difference of a view of uh, a service company versus a, a productization company, a software as a service company, uh, you know, transformation has many forms. Um, everything from back office systems, uh, how we communicate, how we maybe automatically communicate with little bots, 
um, and how we keep the business running. I mean, transformation is a journey on its own. We could talk about this in the terms of a, a maturity model, like a SDLC, if we'd like, or a data maturity model. We could take that, that angle. Um, it would be great to hear your opinion on a data maturity model. Well, I am glad that you asked that. <laughs> so there's actually a data maturity model that, uh, to be perfectly honest, I haven't looked at in, in, a, in a bit, and maybe they've updated it, or maybe they call it something different now. But um, there is a data maturity model from uh, CMMI. And of course, uh, what that acronym stands for at the moment escapes me. Uh, I'm sure our listeners... Uh, uh, can find that out on Google. But basically it is a model that is designed to say, hey, let's go into an organization and ask, you know, not like a questionnaire, but uh, basically kind of like a, a consulting or you know, survey and say, okay, you know, how are you doing with your, you know, your data governance? You know, what policies and procedures you have in place? Who's allowed to touch the data? Who's allowed to move the data? Who's allowed to clone or delete the data? Um, and then other things like, you know, what kind of architectures do you have in place? So if all of a sudden your servers crash on prem or, um, you know, a, a, a zone on GCP decides to conk out on you, you know, are you still going to be able to do your business operation? So I'm, I'm kind of making it very simplistic from what it actually is. Um, but it's a five pillared system. Um, that's used to basically say, okay, uh, organization X, Y, Z, here's where you currently are in terms of your digital transformation maturity. How do we go from here to there? And then once we're there, how do we go from there to the next there and so on and so forth? Um, every company is going to be, you know, in kind of a different place in their, you know, transformation process. But um uh, from my experience of using it, it's usually a pretty intuitive model uh, and most organizations, even those people that don't uh, have their hands directly into digital transformations, uh, have found it very helpful. CMMI data maturity model. Again, can't remember what CMMI means off the top of my head, but. <laughs> I was I was holding back here, John. Compatibility maturity model integration. It's fine. It's a process of processes. It's a framework. It's all good. It's all good. Well, John, okay, this was a, good, good. a very informative discussion and a little lively. <laughs> I'm sure we can have fun um, traversing several areas and, and going further in. Uh, how about we conclude this episode and maybe make a mention of our next episode? In our next episode, we will discuss one of my favorite uh, digital transformation topic. And it's not what you think, John. It's Ninja <laughs> IT. And no <laughs> cat out of the bag on that one. All right. Well, I, I am clearly in the dark, Martin, so uh, I'm looking forward to our next discussion. I didn't know ninjas were in IT, but um, we'll see what you have to say. Well, John, it's been fun talking as usual, and lights out.